Good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us. Well, and speaking of interesting, I think uh, I think we've got to dip in uh, really quickly here. So, uh, yeah, we are starting early today um, for a very important reason. Um, just a little while ago, we received notification that the jury um, had made a uh, final decision, uh, del- finished their deliberation uh, on the George Floyd case, uh, or you know, the Chauvin verdict, whatever you, however you want to look at it. And uh, that decision is going to be coming down shortly. And um, as we do like to talk about things that are interesting to us, uh, this is this is very interesting to us. So, um, James, talk us talk us through the situation. Tell us a little bit about what you know of what's going on. Uh, tell us about George Floyd and uh, you know what that's meant for you. Um, yeah, no, I mean uh, this. You know, I, I've been out. I've been out in uh, in in the world since COVID started um for work and so this basically became very vital i mean to me uh and to a lot of other uh young black men especially that we uh that i i came into contact with we were constantly saying you know like hey you know be safe and all that kind of stuff but basically uh it's been i think it's been about a year now um since this whole thing went down and so um basically if you do not know George Floyd was uh, arrested outside of a convenience store in Minneapolis. He was arrested, um, and I, like like again, there's bits and pieces that I don't know. But basically, the the long story short is that uh, while he was arrested, he was placed on the ground. This officer, Derek Chauvin, and apparently a couple other officers pinned him down to the ground. And Officer Chauvin, or former Officer Chauvin, I should say, had his knee in George Floyd's neck for over nine minutes. Um, the The video was hard to watch. I, it took me a number of, of days after to finally watch it. And I was angry. I was angry because just the nonchalantness of these officers with cameras on them with people like pleading for him to be able to breathe people saying he cannot breathe he cannot breathe like and and you know hearing just uh, stories of, of george floyd saying he couldn't breathe be calling for his mother who had recently passed away you know it and just the, uh, sorry, just the the sheer nonchalantness of these officers to to, to be like back up uh, when a woman said, "Please let me check his vitals." Uh, she was an EMT or nurse or something like that. She was asking to check his vitals, and one of the op- other officers basically stopped her. Like that is that is a part of her job. Like that is something to be concerned about this man who if he's saying he can't breathe he's obviously not fighting you anymore he's he's in handcuffs you have him on the ground where is the threat anymore where is the threat i mean yes i understand that he was just, just looking from the pictures george floyd was not a small man like he was a big guy But at that point, when you have him on the ground, he's in handcuffs with his hands behind his back. You have your knee in his neck. Where is that man a threat? Where? Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get an argument from me. Um, So for those of you uh, joining us live right now, um, you know, we are talking about the George Floyd case. Um, the, The jury has reached a verdict that should be read shortly. Um, we, we did decide to go live now rather than waiting. Take a breath, man. Take a breath. No, I, um, I am. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. No, no. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, different, everyone, you know, in the country, I think is in some way aware of this situation. Uh, you'd have to be behind a pretty big rock to have no idea what's going on. Um, it, it, I don't know if you're seeing it. So 
you may hear in the background, folks, uh, we do have, both of us have a video up of uh, the live broadcasts uh, from multiple different news agencies, uh, because as the verdict is coming out, we want to be as well informed as possible to share that with you. Um, so with that being said, you know, obviously this was about a year ago. Uh, I think it was in May, if I remember correctly. So it's been just shy of a year. Um, yeah, just shy of a year. And, uh, and so I'm not going off of any show prep or notes or anything because this was really on the fly kind of. Uh, we But we are live. So if you are watching, uh, we do have the comment box open. You're welcome to share your thoughts, ask questions. Um, obviously, you've got <clears throat> two guys uh, of differing backgrounds. Um, you know, we do have a lot of similar ones. But, uh, you know, we're, clearly I'm not black. Uh, I am the fat guy. So, um so James, as as a black man, um, you know you you spent majority of your life in in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, now living in Las Vegas, you spent some time in Northern Nevada, but you also spent some time on the East Coast, um, right? In um, Maryland, uh, as I recall. Right. So um, as a, as a black man, because uh, I can't speak to that, right? So as a black man, um, you've been I'm sure pulled over by a cop at some point in your life, and uh, what is that experience like for you? Uh, I mean, the first reaction now, see, so I have a different reaction to this because um, this is this is not a new thing, mind you, like, you know, black people being pulled over by the cops, harassed and everything else. This is a th this whole thing with guns being drawn on black people as soon as they pull get pulled over. That is a new that's OK. That's a new phenomenon for me because I'm now seeing it a lot more. So, but I, I knew, you know, especially after Rodney King, I knew some of that kind of stuff could happen. But I have, for me, I have not had a hostile interaction with police. Okay. I have not had that situation. Now, mind you, in Newark, a lot of the officers knew me. Um, and the reason they knew me was because of my work at Red Robin. And they would come into Red Robin and do... Um, their uh, Tipicop, which was uh, a fundraiser for Special Olympics. And I was a lot of times manager on those days. And so I was kind of a connection between the cops. And so a lot of them ended up knowing me and I knew a number of them. Not, you know, like, not like we were buddy, buddy, but they knew who I was. So sure. anytime I had, anytime I, I got into any trouble in Newark, for example, uh, and not really trouble, but just got pulled over for doing something like I ran a stop sign, wasn't paying attention, whatever. Like they, you know, they would always be like, oh, hey, what's going on, man? You know, and I was like, oh, was, hey, and they tell me why. I, and then, you know, they were like, hey, just make sure you're careful out here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, cool, man. No problem. I, I do apologize about that. And everything was very cordial. Um, but there is no, I mean, like anytime you get pulled over. Anytime you get pulled over, it's always a, a, a butt clenching, you know, experience because you're like, ah, no, 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 no. But for me, especially lately, it's when a cop, I see a cop come up behind me. Not only am I like, am, am I like, okay, have I done anything wrong? A, and then B, if they do pull me over, I just need to remain calm and get home. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's. I mean, at that point, give me a ticket. Give me, uh, you know, give me a warning. Give me a ticket. Give me whatever. But just let me get home. I would much rather. Yeah, and that's. You know, that's not necessarily anything different than I would say the average person, right? We should all hope to get home, but I think uh, I I haven't gotten pulled over in quite a long time myself. Um, you know, I, I honestly can't say when the last time was that uh, I had any traffic violations, but um, I definitely don't necessarily, uh, I, I don't think I would be terribly concerned if I got pulled over, you know, going to work to d today. Um, and, and uh, you know, it seems that we've lost James for a moment. So uh, we'll, we'll hope that he pops back in and 
All right, folks, we are back live. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. We do have James back. Um, not sure what happened there, but... Uh, no, I, <laughs> I don't either. Um, I, I, uh, I've, I've now closed out everything. I think that might have been one of the reasons. I didn't have too much open. I just had, like, another page open. But uh, I do apologize about that. Um, Tech happens. So, Tech happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, we lost all five viewers we were up to. So that's okay. <laughs> um, there are worse things in the world. So uh, again, we're we're back, and uh, part of the reason we are broadcasting right now, uh, starting earlier than our anticipated time, uh, is due to the uh, jury uh, in the George Floyd case uh, coming to a verdict. Uh, I'm watching a live shot right now outside of the courtroom, and you can see that there are probably, I would say, a good couple hundred protesters that have gathered so far. Um, I'm not sure what they're protesting yet um, because no decision has been made yet. So hopefully we will see uh, either way that hopefully this goes in a positive direction, at least for the city of Minneapolis. Um, so uh, James, before you got disconnected, we were talking about, uh, you know, a traffic stop for a black man and what that uh, feels like or, or what go, what goes through your mind and what you're right. thinking. And, and you had mentioned that, you know, for you uh, these days, the, the most important thing to place through your mind is you just want to get home. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that for me, you know, uh, as I was saying before you got cut off, I could, I could be driving to work this morning and get pulled over. And I don't think that that's necessarily a concern of mine. Uh, I think for me, it's, ah, what did I get caught doing? You know, um, you know, I don't know where my, uh, paperwork is. I mean, I, I'm sure, I'm sure I could find it pretty easily, but, uh, I, I feel like in, and correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe, you know, exactly where all your paperwork is, because if you need to grab it, uh, you want to make sure to be able to say, this is where I'm going to reach in. This is what I'm reaching for. Is that, yeah, is that no, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's just, I mean, like, again, I was actually, I was watching. I was watching this video this morning um, and it was basically about black parents having to have what they call the talk, uh, which is uh, this. I mean, so it's not like, you know, the sex talk. It's about how to interact with police and, you know, like basically, yes, have your hands on the wheel. Announce everything that you're doing. Like you, you need to make sure they know that, okay, can I, you know, you actually almost have to, it's, it's like playing a really horrible game of Simon Says. I mean, just, I mean, pardon the, the, uh, the horrible analogy, but, but, you know, you know, uh, you know, you basically have to say officer or, or mother, may I actually is probably a better, uh, uh, you know, analogy, um, you know, officer, can I reach for my wallet? It's in my pocket. You know, can I reach for my paperwork? It's in my glove compartment. Or, you know, and sometimes even as I'm getting pulled over, like, you know, like I'll just have the glove compartment open and, and like just grab it, you know, so I had and, and put it down like so I'm not and just keep my hands up and on the on the on the uh, steering wheel. But yes, I mean, like that this is that is it's a serious thing. Like we we have to, you know, make sure that we announce everything that we're doing so that we are not perceived as a threat. I mean, personally, I look at myself and I mean, I know me, I know me. So I don't see myself as a threat. Yes, I am 6'2". Yes, I am a, a very, you know, I'm not like a small dude. And so I can, I, I know that I can be perceived as a threat. Even though, you know, in most days, especially for work, I'm in uh, a... Uh, just a Under Armour T-shirt, shorts, knee pads, and and steel toe boots for work. That's mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? I in, in my drive in my passenger seat, I have a lunch bag that has ice packs with water in it. You know, I have I have some snacks on my front seat that are easily available to me. That's that's me. You know, right now in my in pretty much my day to day in my day to day life. So I don't see myself as a threat. But I also have to know that How could you be perceived my my perception of myself is not a threat, but to somebody else who doesn't know me, I could be perceived as a threat. 
Mark, sure. you've, known me, you've known me for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and I'm sure there have been people who, who see, or like, I, was there a time when, I, when, you, when you met me when I was sitting down and then I would actually stand up People would be like, "Oh, damn! Like you, you are, <laughs> you are a lot bigger than than I thought." Because a lot of times, especially in classes, I'd be coming, I'd be in already, and I'd be sitting down. Yeah, I, they'd be confused. Like, why is that butt up so high on your back? But, <laughs> um, you know, yes, you you are. I, I wouldn't say I've ever, as long as I've known you in any way. I don't think I've ever even seen you super angry. I've seen you mad once or twice, um, but. Uh, yeah, you are you are tall, um, but I've never. I think because of your personality and because of knowing you, I don't necessarily perceive you as this larger figure, so to speak. Where when I think about some of the other friends I've had in my life that are taller, that you know maybe they get some drinks in them and they become super aggressive, and then that's where their size can become a little bit of an issue. You know where you become worried. I've I've never had that case with you, but. As you said, I know you. I've known you right. for 20 years. Where, um, you know, any and, – and, you know, we can always talk about this from so many different angles and, and out of so many sides, right, where cops are trained that you never know what the situation is that you're walking into. So, you, you, theoretically, you're not profiling, um, but they always are. That's that's the reality, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so – you know, in in this in this particular case, what we've heard from the defense is, you know, they, they've tried to use the argument that uh, he was on drugs, that he's got a record, that um, you know he was a large, intimidating figure that was initially uh, somewhat resistant, um, and, and so that might might justify some of the actions in the beginning, you know, taking him down getting him into to a position to where he would become somewhat docile. But after that, um, I think that's where everything beyond about minute two in that video um, all just goes away very quickly. Very quickly. I mean, it, it, like, like, I, I, like I said before, that when, when, does, when did he stop becoming a threat? That's that's an interesting question. You know, the the defense uh, really leaned on that that he Derek Chauvin was acting, you know, within his training that he was following the, the police training that he had been given, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And uh, I don't know. I'm not a cop. I'm not going to pretend like I've ever right. gone through any police training. But I I can't imagine that four minutes in to that situation, you know, he he's at that point laying there he's not resisting he's not trying to you know he's he's starting to at that point you know ask say that he's having a hard time breathing that you know he's things are not going well for him and what we see is more of the same rather than any kind of, of let up on the situation and so i i'm not a juror i'm not i i didn't sit through the countless hours uh, of of court time that that these jurors did, but yeah, hearing all the testimony and everything else, yeah, I I can't I can't see any end result where he isn't Chauvin isn't found guilty of at least one of the three charges. Um, I don't necessarily know that I agree with second degree murder. Murder. Uh, maybe I could see some people trying to get there. I I I don't think I can get there. Um, you know, I, I saw people, and and I do want to ask you, you know, do you think that ultimately George Floyd died because he was black? Do you think that there was any racial issues within this situation that that's what ultimately got us to where we are today? Aside from the fact that maybe they were a little bit more aggressive with him in the beginning than they needed to be because he, you know, was a large black man. Um... It's a low, yeah. I mean, I do believe, I believe that race played somewhat of a role in this. Um, I don't want to say the whole the whole thing because I again, I'm not in these, I'm not in these officers' heads. I'm not. 
um, I, I do not want to claim that I know what's going on in their minds. I don't know, but but at the same time, where was the humanity? There, if you're doing something to somebody, there comes a point when your humanity should be taking over, saying, okay, he's not, you know, he, he's, he is no longer a threat to me. Let me, you know, get off of him. Or, I mean, hell, even if the, uh, some of the other officers, and that's, that was one of the things that when I watched the video was, does this man have something on these other officers to where they would not stand up to him or say, hey, man, like, or, or something along those lines of like, hey, let's, I, I, we're good. Like, let's get off of them or something. You know, like, they, it just seemed really, they seem, the other officers seemed really complicit in this action. Now, I know some of them have lost their jobs. Oh, wait. Uh, hold on. The jury's being led back into the courtroom, it sounds like. Yeah, it looks like I just, I'm just seeing the judge sit down. It's hard to tell from the outside shots that I'm seeing, but it does look like there's quite a few, uh, I would say a couple hundred, if not, oh, here we go, the judge is about to speak. Uh, for those of you watching live, uh, we we will be watching this and taking it in, so, um, you know, please continue to join us if you want. If you feel like peeling away and coming back, you're welcome to do that, but we will continue to broadcast live uh, through this and, and listening to what the jury says, listening to what the judge has to say, um, and discussing that. He's testing his mic, it looks like. They're, uh, on, on ABC, they're all ri they rise, I guess, for the, uh, the jury yep. coming in. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's a tiny courtroom, by the way. James, can you turn your volume up? We'll just listen on yours. Yeah. Court, 4th Judicial District, State of Minnesota Plaintiff versus Derek Michael Chauvin. Can you hear it all right? Yep. Burden, count one. Court file number 27, CR 20-12646. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, Find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.44 p.m. Wow. Signed juror four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count two. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count two. Third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act. Find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1.45 p.m. Signed by jury four person, juror number 19. Same caption, verdict count three. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count three, second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk. Find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021 at 1 45 p.m. Jury four person, zero one nine. Members of the jury, I'm now going to ask you individually if these are your true and correct verdicts. Please respond yes or no. Juror number two, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number nine, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 19, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 27, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 44, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 52, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 55, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 79, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 85, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 89, is this your, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 91, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Juror number 92, are these your true and correct verdicts? Yes. Are these your verdicts, so say you one, so say you all? Yes. 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 Members of the jury, I find that uh, the verdict says red reflect the will of the jury and will be filed accordingly.
I have to thank you on behalf of the people of the state of Minnesota for not only jury service, but heavy duty jury service. What I'm gonna ask you to do now is to follow the deputy back into your usual room and I will join you in a few minutes to answer questions and to advise you further. So all rise for the jury. So as we just heard, um, Derek Chauvin found guilty on all three charges. Um, you know, maximum penalty on the big one was, I believe, 40 years um, in prison. Uh, so, so more likely than not, this guy's going to spend the rest of his life um, in in prison. Um, they, now, uh, I did, I did, I was watching uh, one of their analysts earlier, and um, he was saying, "Yes, those are the the charges would be heavy, um, but he might be serving the lesser end of those." Of, of of those charges uh, i mean you, you know one of the things one of the things i did hear uh that i was listening to earlier today was the case that the fact that the jury arrived at these verdicts so quickly without any questions uh during their deliberation time whatsoever can only help chauvin's case in appeal um that that perhaps they were swayed to to make this decision by the outside you know world because uh they they weren't put under a uh what is it called uh sequester yeah uh, until really late in the game and so they they could have heard what was going on in the news they could have heard what maxine waters for example has been saying uh publicly out in minnesota so um and while you know him being found guilty i don't like i said for me personally i don't know about all three counts but uh definitely i i i would hope that the people standing outside of the courtroom in minneapolis right now would uh and chauvin's being uh put into cuffs on my side um and walked away oh uh, what i was looking at was uh they they have an explanation of the charges um and all, all three all three counts of um uh, i see uh on my end i'm seeing a lot of people outside of the courtroom uh looks like they're crying looks like they're i, I wouldn't say jubilant because obviously that's not that might be a bit of a stretch but it, it you know people are hugging they, they i seem think to, it's 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 more of a it's more of a, a relief thing i think it is is that we and and i don't know i i'm not seeing the pictures from outside but i can uh, I'm i'm seeing uh it looks like oh a gathering and and people are 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 cheering and and things like that and i think it's more of a it's it's it, i can guarantee you it's pretty much a, a relief thing because um there have been i'm sure a lot of people can relate there have been a lot of trials of officers that have they have in a sense gotten away with murder um and so so for for this uh this is this is definitely a big win um this is a big win in this case um and, and i mean of course i'm not i do not feel um i do not want to say i feel any ill will towards towards anybody um in this case and and you know and i i feel sorry for this man now because of his actions he, he is now going to possibly end up spending the rest of his life in jail but what this does prove is that i think it, it officers need to be held to account I think everyone, not just officers. I mean, oh, everyone... no, yeah, no, everyone needs to be made to account. But I'm saying in these situations, a lot of times that uh, I, I let me apologize for what I, I'm what I mean is in a lot of these type cases is that uh, there's been there's been a lot of you know um, where the officers aren't held to account for some of these things. This hopefully will this may change some things. That's that's yeah so what what i'm seeing on my end is uh it looks like people are flooding out into the streets now um you know obviously there there was concern uh you know the 
the uh, National Guard for the state of Minnesota was called up. Uh, local police uh, agencies are, of course, in force right now. Yeah, uh, they, not, know, they, not knowing what the results here were going to be. Right, they they went into a state. The governor issued a state of emergency. So okay, so while while we follow some of the aftermath here of of. Uh, Derek Chauvin being found guilty on all three charges. Let's reflect back on last year when everything happened and, you know, a lot of the looting and rioting and, and things of that nature that happened last year. What are your thoughts on, on that? I don't like that. Um, and here's, here's why. Um, I, 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 underst I understand protesting. Okay, I understand protesting when something, when there is an injustice that happens and then you are peacefully protesting. Yeah, sometimes it, it can get a little crazy, yes, but when it's majority peaceful protests and you are, you are, you know, locking, you are doing whatever you're doing peacefully, making sure that you are seen and you are heard. I'm fall four. When you go in, and the the biggest issue I have with a lot of these riots that happen, you're burning your own damn neighborhoods, people. Now, and don't get me wrong, I understand that some of these people, some of these people come in from outside. Like, so uh, I know, like in Ferguson, for example, um, this is about I think almost two years ago now. When Ferguson happened. There was there was reports where they found people who were coming across into Ferguson and taking advantage of a situation that was mm -hmm. happening there. And so what sometimes what ends up happening is and this is this is a lot of reason why, uh, especially like the Black Lives Move, uh, Black Lives Matter movement hit a lot of roadblocks. And that was because in the midst of their protest, people were coming in, basically saying they were with BLM and looting and breaking windows and all this kind of stuff. I actually saw a video, um, which was insane, where they, it was a group of people all hooded up and everything. And uh, some of them weren't, but they were breaking windows and stuff, spray painting BLM but they didn't look black. Like, like you could see some of like the face, like, like underneath some of the masks and stuff like that. And it seemed like, again, they were doing this under the cover of BLM. So do you think that the only people who support or are part of Black Lives Matter are black? No, I don't think, I don't think that just, well, I'm saying this, it was just a, it was a, it, just the video seems really sketch. Like that's all I'm saying about that video. But what I'm saying is yes, there are tons of people who have are supporting this movement um and 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 yes i mean yes like don't get me wrong like other people's lives matter too but at this the reason that this movement i think caught on so big especially with what we were seeing is that for so long we haven't had this voice we haven't had so many people standing up in our corner saying like, there needs to be justice. There needs to be some sort of reform. Uh, but I'm sorry, I am kind of getting off topic, but back to the, back to the rioting and looting and all that stuff, like stop burning your own neighborhoods. These are our people. These are our businesses. Like we need to make sure we can make a point without looking crazy. I mean, because that's one of the things that, that always drives me crazy, especially when I see this kind of stuff, is like, we want them to not treat us like we are subhuman. Um, we want to be treated like humans, but we are not acting civilized in these situations like yes civilized protest be civil in your protests but when you're burning down buildings when you're looting stealing all that kind of stuff that's not civilized man 
And we need to stop that. We need to stop that. So let me ask you, what is the line between civil and uncivil? Do you, do you think that lying down in the middle of the road blocking freeways, is that civil? I, well, personally, I don't think being on the freeway as a human being is just safe in general. Like, that's just, you know, in my opinion. Um, like, I, I did see some of that, like, in L.A. and stuff where, like, they were blocking freeways and stuff like that. And for me, that is – that's a line, um, you know, because people – I mean, yeah, people are upset, but people still have jobs to do. So when you are on the freeway when you're – when you are blocking that kind of stuff from happening, uh, yes, I do find that to be an issue. And so I do understand while I'm saying, yes, protests and stuff like that, but and but and so a lot of that will take place on a street. Um, but as long, like, like a freeway, again, I'm not for that just because uh, car versus humans, I'm pretty sure the car is gonna win every time. But uh, when, if it's like on a, you know, like on a street corner, um, where, you know, if, you know, people can get by and then, yeah, some, I mean, like, again, stuff will get, and so like, yes, traffic can be blocked up and stuff like that. I'm all for that, man. Like I just, but at the same time, like make sure, and that's the hardest thing too, is that you can't make sure that the people that are there are there for the proper reasons. No, it's wanna, not like there's a you know, sign up, uh, tell us what you're here for interview or anything. Right. And so like, I mean, yeah, that'd be super nice if, <laughs> if, if that, that could work, but man, like, um, I just think that, uh, the demonstrations that we saw, not only here in the United States, but around the world after George Floyd was murdered, that spoke volumes to me. That, gave me some hope especially in such a dark time as we were in last year of we could really see some change right now man like this is a prime this is a prime time for some serious changes because so not only but and that's the thing is that we need like because these things happened we need to always keep them in our minds. But the thing is, we always need to keep them in action. We need to make sure that we are not letting these things go. We do eventually, like everything, everything has its time, everything has its day. And yes, this will, um, this will go to the back burners uh, of our minds, but always keep that pilot light lit. Remember that these things are still happening. They, I mean, hell, in just the past, like what, three weeks we've had incidents with officers and black men on camera again man and so this is one of those things where this is not an isolated situation these things will continue to unfortunately these things will continue to happen until we get some serious police reform in this country okay speaking of that what are your ideas for police reform <sighs> um I think we need to have some, uh, I mean, um, some non, uh, non lethal, uh, ways to, well, not only that, but de-escalating situations, um, ways to detain people that do not involve, uh, that are, I guess, in more ways peaceful, I would say, like, to where you're not using, so like where that lethal force is your last option. That's already supposed to be the case. Right, but apparently it doesn't seem that way. So. By all means, uh, we, we do have some viewers. If you have questions, comments, please feel free to join in. Uh, we, we do have, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we do have a comment here. Let's go ahead and read through this. Uh, the U S is one of the most historically violent countries on earth. They only, the only time true change that has occurred when it comes to social justice has been brought on by violent protests and riots, whether it be instigated by the protesters or the police other side. 
So uh, what I believe I'm understanding this person to say is that the only way to get a point through is via violence. Um, and I, I mean, you know, to some extent there's a bit of truth there, right? Ultimately, right. when Absolutely. we look at, when we look at how we became a country, the way that we became a country is through <laughs> violence, right? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, when we look at uh, the civil war, it, you know, to, to, you know, many different reasons why it happened, but ultimately it, it had to be ended through violence. Right. Um, by no means will I ever be a person that condones violence uh, for violence sake or for trying to make your point. I think that uh, if you're having to resolve to those means, um, discussions you've already broke lost. Down some, yeah. Discussions broke down somewhere. And like, I, I mean, like pretty much like I, I've, I've said, I am not a fighter whatsoever. Um, I will. Anytime I've been in some sort of situation, I have either tried to de-escalate or get out of that said situation because I I don't like fighting. Um, yes, I do agree that sometimes sometimes um, the some pe I mean, unfortunately, some people only respond to violence. Um, but again, I I agree with Mark in this situation where I do not agree that um, violence is a uh, is a way to go so right now i'm watching and uh, you know more live shots going on outside and when i say live shots i mean people are drinking in the streets it looks like um people are throwing money now i'm seeing um, and so uh you know obviously you would think with the way that this uh case has come to an end with with what the jury has found I, I would expect that we're not going to see any violence coming out of this, I would hope. Um, I would hope that, you know, any protesting that we do see is what we're seeing. People celebrating, cheering, um, you know, hugging, drinking, whatever. I, I think these are all appropriate means of, in, of taking this moment in. Um, yeah. I will say on the, on, on the other side, though, I hope a lot of these people are vaccinated. <laughs> this could very easily become a major super spreader event. Well, what I'm seeing, it looks like a lot of people are wearing masks. The only, oh, at least in the shot that I'm seeing, the only person that is not in a mask uh, at, right in this moment is uh, somebody who is, looks like she is uh, leading some kind of uh, of chant. But yes, no, I do agree with you on that. Definitely, I hope I hope all these people ha are are vaccinated. Yeah, the the so I've got two different shots going on right now, and what I'm seeing, I, I would say maybe one out of every twenty ish or so people are not wearing a mask. Um, you know, uh, again, if you're fully vaccinated and you're willing to roll the dice, that's that's cool. Um, I I always worry about you know these types of events uh, in general, even you know pre-COVID times is, you know, if somebody's there and sick, everybody's gonna get it. And uh, yeah. By all, by all means, like I said, I think this is a time for, for some celebration, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I would hope that a lot of the people there and around the country feel similar to you, that um, there, is, there is justice and, and that, you know, the system has worked. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you heard, but, you know, the jurors uh, were predominantly white, actually. Uh, there was six white, four black, and two that considered themselves multi, multicultural. Um, right. So, you know, in in that situation, it, it wasn't you know it wasn't like it was split. It, it, you know, it was a unanimous. So, uh, we've got a comment. Uh, I don't condone the violence, but when your own neighborhood is being destroyed by the police, gentrification. And more violence. Sometimes violence is the only option or solution that will be heard. Um, I, I can't really. There's, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can um, not agree with that. But um, yeah, and that's the thing too is that uh, hopefully. I mean, and I, I swear, I, I really hope that this changes some things because it's it's one of those things where um, 
the police are it's, uh, it's, it's protect and serve and a lot of times it's not being it's the protect part is not be, being seemed to be observed especially in some of these neighborhoods oh uh, wait, uh there it looks like there's a they're changing a sign this is justice for George Floyd looks like they're justice. Uh, I, they're they're changing. Uh, what I'm looking at is just a live shot uh, outside. Oh, and then um, so basically they're changing a sign that says uh, "Justice for George Floyd," and then underneath, and then right underneath that they're posting right now, "Justice served." Yeah, I, as I said, I don't think anybody uh, out there in their, hopefully in their absolute right mind, could could honestly say that they didn't see something inappropriate in in that situation. Um, you know, uh, like I said before, I don't necessarily. I, I heard somebody trying to make an argument for first degree murder, which is premeditated. And yeah, I don't think it was premeditated whatsoever. Like, yeah. So like, I, I mean, I, you have. I mean, like that's just that would be that. That's almost a pure evil thought. Like, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna arrest somebody and I'm gonna kill them. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and so there just, are there obviously are people on both of the extremes, right? There are the people that, for some reason, genuinely think that that should have been one of the charges and that he would be guilty of it, and then there are the other people that genuinely, for some reason, don't think he the, didn't the officer. Wrong. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know how you could even come to that conclusion, but okay. No, and I, I don't either. And, you know, I think we have seen some cases <clears throat> over, uh, you know, the last number of years where um, maybe perceived justice wasn't served. But, you know, the important thing that I always think needs to be done is is the facts and and knowing them all and because if you're purely going off of one side's perception or uh, only listening to one point of view, you're you're bound to be misled. And so, you know, just mm -hmm. as I do, just as I've always done with politics, I I hear both sides 100%. I will sit and I will watch Fox News for a day, and then the next day I'll sit and watch CNN. Those are the two big extremes of the spectrum, right? Um, right. Because I think it's important to give both sides the opportunity to to make their case and obviously i'm not just saying fox and cnn are the only you know voices to be heard i, I like to go to uh you know people's speeches watch them speak for themselves hear what they have to say mm -hmm. uh, and and so you know in this case obviously george floyd doesn't have the ability to speak for himself unfortunately yes that's correct you, you know the the poetic beauty of this situation kind of is the fact that we do have those videos um because without those it, there is a possibility that this officer walks away right i mean e even the crazy thing even the crazy thing is better with uh with, with even like body cameras I i've always i've never understood how sometimes they oh they went out like what like <laughs> Like at the most vital portion of this conversation, how did you how how did it go out? Like that is that is how is that even a possibility? But with this, with so many different videos, with the all the different testimonies, I swear, I mean, I I, I mean, just the fact that I mean, some of these guys, super brave. I'm not gonna lie, like like especially some of the guys that are are just you know common outside you know the uh not common outside but, but there's some of these people that were eyewitnesses to this whole event to come forward even i mean i think they had a child on the stand at one point in time like the j just the nervousness of that i mean because then you're out in the community your face has been seen you know like so i mean i must i, I want to commend those people for you know being brave and and stepping up and telling their truths to to the to the jury in that situation man like that's that's not an easy thing to do um 
and especially when you know your your face like the jurors you know for for most of them uh you know their their faces haven't been seen their faces probably uh you know they probably won't be seen for for some time um but these people who testified these people who who were up on that stand i mean their faces were out there their names are out there all that kind of stuff so that makes it so that makes it a little bit harder for them but i want to definitely give them a a hand clap for for stepping up and 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 uh, putting themselves out there and and um, helping and get justice for for Mr. Floyd here. Yeah, uh, so we did have a, a comment from our dam uh, designated audience member. Uh, there are better places to get balanced conservative news than Fox News F A U X. Um, my you know my pushback to that comment is very simply: I want to hear the extremes, yeah. and I think that that's important. Um, because there, yes, of course, there are more balanced uh, views, and those are important too. But if you don't at least hear the far extremes, yeah, um, then it's hard to figure out what the middle is. And um, you know, I definitely think CNN, MSNBC are kind of the extreme left. If we're talking about mainstream media, if we're not talking about, you know, going, you know, to a uh, channel that's somewhere in the 900 series or whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> right, the, dark, the dark recesses of TV. Yeah, I want to stick in the I want to stick in the first hundred channels, you know. Um, you know, and, and ironically, I'm, I'm you know being a huge Disney fan, Disney's parent company of ABC. I don't enjoy ABC News. They're they're not very good, in my opinion. Um, I, I like some of their stuff. I'm more of a I'm more, I'm more of a uh... Uh, and when it comes to news, I'm more of a Lester Holt guy. To guy. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think if I had spent the last year hearing only one side of this argument, which I think the majority of our country, it, it is so polarized these days that m most people are li literally only listening to one side. Uh, they don't want to hear the middle or they don't even want to hear the other side. Um, and I think that's why there is so much divide because we've become so self-concerned, so self-obsessed uh, rather than wanting to hear what other people want or feel or, or, or anything. Um, it's not going to get any better until we're will willing to at least listen to the other side. And, I was and actually just having a conversation about this with somebody the other day. And uh, we were talking about how, how, um, and I was making the point, uh, and in some cases, a lot of, uh, I mean, people in, in political spectrums all over the board, when they lose, when they are starting to unravel from their argument, like, let's say they made an argument, and somebody comes back, and they, and they have, and they can shut that kind of down. And so instead of, instead of, you know, having a meaningful debate about said topic, they kind of just want to shut it down and make sure that, yeah, you know, look, if I can't be heard, if my, if my opinion is not the one, then nobody's opinion. I don't care. I'm out. Like, and they'll, they'll like, they'll leave the situation or whatnot instead of, you know, actually defending what they're talking about. And yeah, we had, we had a in-depth conversation about that the other day. Yeah. If, if you watch political debate today, it is not what a debate is supposed to be. You know, and unfortunately, too many people are afraid to debate their beliefs. That's where I think a lot of the people uh, tend to run from the situation because when you're actually called on to defend your belief against this point of view, you st a lot of people, I think, start to find that they can't actually justify their opinion or they, they, they don't know why they feel that way. Like, I think, like, and that's the thing is, like, I mean, look, I have my opinions about stuff. I know you have your opinions about stuff and some of the stuff that we might not agree on. And I know some of the stuff that we do agree on. And, and I can tell you some of my opinions, yes, are just simply that. They're just my opinions. It's just what I think about a situation. Um, but, but, you know, I, I think some of it, some of it comes from, some of it absolutely comes from being, you know, uh, raised in a religious household. Some, so some things, uh, I mean, yeah, I've broken away from some of it, of course, but, uh, but 
and I mean, my, and actually, if, if you know my family at all, we're not very, you know, we're not like super extreme on anything. Um, but uh, I mean, we have what we believe in and, and I think your family helps form those beliefs. And so for me, like, if it's just my belief, it's my belief. I mean, I'm not, I mean, that's just the way I kind of feel about certain things, you know? So and here's, you know, a comment and I'd like to get your opinion, James. So the comment is, Equal rights for all versus kill people I hate is not a balanced argument. Yeah, that, uh, what what do you think? Is that, is that I'm not sure I follow. Um, yeah, I, but I, I mean, I uh, is there are there people out there that are saying we want equal rights, and then people on the other side saying I want to kill you because you have want equal rights. So I don't I don't think I see that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of I mean, I I do. There's a part of me that kind of understands but not really like so like yes there are people that yes equal rights i believe for all is very important like i believe that we that's just kind of something that needs to happen mm -hmm. um but and and there are going to be and there are going to be those people on the opposite side i mean we saw this uh, not we saw this but you know we can read about this during especially like the civil war times where people were saying you know abolitionists were like we need to end slavery and slave you know, in the South, we're like, uh, no, this is big for us. We need to keep it. Mm -hmm. And so, and which ultimate, like we talked about before, turned into the Civil War. Um, but uh, was this too many people are afraid to stand up for their beliefs and also too many Americans are narcissistic, yes, and refuse to look at the other side of the coin and more so relate to it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I can agree with that too. I can agree with that. Um, where uh, there, there are always two sides to a situation. And, and like Mark said, I, and, and I very much commend you on that. And I need to get better at doing that myself is looking at the both extreme sides and then looking somewhere in the middle. I, I, I can, I am guilty of, of kind of, you know, looking at one side of things. Um, I mean, just so matter matter of fact, right? Like, as as you and I personally know, and I'm not afraid to, you know, share those th this with the audience. You know, I am a fiscal conservative, right? Fiscal conservative. I believe my money is my money. I think I know how to spend it best. I would like to have every dollar that I earn by working be my dollars, and and I can give them to the charities I see fit, to uh, wherever I see fit. I think my money should be my money. And because I work to earn it. Um, now, I, I I understand taxes. I do. And so I'm yeah. not saying that I shouldn't pay taxes either. I, not to be confused. I do believe that uh, we as citizens of a country need to share in the um, growth and, and safety of that country. And so I do not have a problem whatsoever with my tax dollars that are collected going towards the defense of this country or going towards the growth and wealth uh, of the country overall, meaning, you know, infrastructure, roads, uh, you know, the, the airways, the, you know, television uh, wouldn't exist without tax dollars. Radio wouldn't exist without tax dollars. Um, so I am in no way saying that my money is my money and I refuse to pay taxes. I'm not one of those people. Uh, where I know that James, when we talk about, uh, you know, conservative versus liberal, you, you tend to lean more liberal, but not when it comes to your money. You're pretty fiscal conservative yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like I said, I, like I've, I've, I've said that um, I, I've become more moderate. I think I would, I would say I'm more, I'm left leaning moderate um, because like, yeah, if, if, you know, if I listen to, if I listen to the other, you know, like we'll say, you know, left and right, if I'm listening to the right and I say, oh, that's actually, that's a pretty darn good idea. You know, I'm not going to deny something just because I lean a little bit more to the left. I want to hear that because that, a, that's, a good that's, idea is a good idea. <laughs> like, doesn't matter where it comes from. Right? Doesn't matter where it comes from. Like, you know, yes. I mean, like, yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a fan of AOC. Yes, I think she goes a little too far sometimes, um, but like she had, and, and like I like some of her ideas, but I also like some, some other ideas. And so, like the thing you is, you just is that, like her dance videos. Calm down. No, actually, I just like her. I think she's pretty fine. But anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm. Just, I think AOC is very attractive woman. Um, 
and uh but no like um but i i like she comes up with i mean i like some i like some of her ideas i mean i've liked some of uh tell me tell me one 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 idea of hers that you've liked oh man i you know i'm not gonna lie i like a lot of people like the green new deal i like parts of the green new deal i'm not a, all what of works? it but like the the green and like the renewable energy part of everything i mean i think that's been a part of some other ideas as well but i think the renewable energy is definitely important because we need to get to that point because this fossil fuel thing is crazy bro <laughs> we need okay. to try and get to we need to try and get to some where we're using uh i mean we are using some now like solar wind all that kind of stuff but i think i think uh some of that needs to be be looked into more so you're not a fan of uh nuclear energy I don't know how I feel because sometimes, like you know, that stuff goes. If that goes sideways, we got Chernobyl out here, bro. Oh come on, <laughs> that, that ain't nowhere near around here. Calm down. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just... <laughs> uh, I like it. I mean, that made the DeLorean go. Apparently, at least in the beginning, before Mister Fusion came around. But <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> So we've got a comment. It's so much easier to be generous with your money when you don't have to worry about running out of it. From Hello Dolly. Money is like manure. It's not worth a thing unless it spreads around encouraging young things to grow. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty that's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, you know, there there is truth to the statement that, you know, if you're not worried about money, then you know, um, uh, you can be generous, and that's true. I mean, yeah. I I think I'm pretty generous. You know, it's not like my wife and I are, are millionaires, or or even you know, we don't even make six figures a year. You know, and but we still uh, give money to things that we believe in, to causes we believe in. Um, you know, it, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think the mentality that. Um, only rich people give or or whatever i, oh, I think no. that's wrong i think yeah no that's definitely not true you know that's definitely uh, not true, you know i i also believe that people need to sometimes uh go out and and earn their keep one way or the other you know i'm, I'm not a fan of people sitting on unemployment or welfare for extended periods of time. I understand stuff happens. I was on unemployment myself at mm -hmm. one point for like nine months. Uh, I had a hard time finding a job. I'd paid into the system. I got back a lot of what I paid into the system. Um, and I went back to work and I started paying back into the system, you know, <laughs> and, and, and have ever since uh, in my, in my adult career, I've only ever been unemployed for nine months. Um, you know, thankfully, um, but, you know, part of that, and I, I was having this conversation with my wife the other day that, you know, if, if something happened right now and I was laid off from my state job that, uh, you know, I, I've got a wife and I've got a kid. I've got to do whatever I have to do to keep our income as best as possible. If that means, you know, unemployment is only paying me X or for only so amount of, much amount of time, if I can find a job that pays anything more than that unemployment, I'm taking that job. If I can, if I run out of that unemployment, then I'm taking any job I can get until I can get something better because, right. because I've got, you know, I have to pay the mortgage. I have to, you know, take care of the wife. I have to take care of the kid. Like these are That's not, not a options. choice. Yeah. That right. is not a choice. That is, that is a must. Like, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think the longest time that I have actually been unemployed yeah, uh, since like I mean I and I've worked I, I think you have too but I, I think we both worked like pretty much since we were 16 years old. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. So uh at least you know at least 16 I might have started a little bit earlier but but like the longest that I have actually gone without a job per se and actually even during that time I wasn't getting unemployment mostly cuz I just was like I'm look I was always looking for something else. I didn't and you know so that's beside the point. Plus I was living with my father at the time so it wasn't really as big of a deal. But the time that I was unemployed was actually during the holidays at one point in time. So like at that point in time, it was like impossible because it was, it was um, during that time when they've pretty much already filled up all their, posi uh, their, all their seasonal positions and everything else. And I had, I had left the job. I had left the job under my own, uh, my, under my own due to the fact that it, it was costing me more to get to work than I was actually making at the time. Yeah, that doesn't um, make a lot of sense. Right, right. So um, I had lost my car, and so I was I was taking a bus and uh, 
taking uh taking the train to taking another bus to get to work and i was like i was i mean why um so i ended up leaving that job but you know it's pretty much i went for an interview i talked with the manager and he said as soon as the beginning of the year rolls around come talk to me and as soon as that roll as soon as the beginning of the year rolled around i went in he gave me a shot and i ended up being at that job for seven years mark what was that job <laughs> red robin yes <laughs> Yes. And so I ended up being there. Uh, and that's, and that's, uh, you know, and that opportunity was a, a, the longest job opportunity, a job I've been with. Um, but yeah, no, like I've said, like I've said before, there is no way, there is no way that I'm going to be on the street. There are too many people that I see on the streets and stuff like that with, oh, homeless help you know, we'll work for food, stuff like that. And it's like, bro, I mean, I get it. I Don't worry. I mean, I totally get it. But there comes a point when pride, whatever it is. Yes, by the way, bottomless fries. Yes, that legit. All day. All day. All day. Um, but like, like I said, I will do whatever it takes. I, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't want to work in fast food, but... I've been there, done go, that. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. And I worked at Wendy's for like uh, combined, like almost at least almost two years because I left, went to school, all that kind of stuff and came back. But, but in that time, like I have zero problem with doing fast food. I'm not above that. I'm not no, above. No, these days they get paid pretty well. Yeah, I'm not above. I'm not above delivering pizzas. I'm not above making pizzas. I'm not above. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like I'm better than the dishwasher. But if I have to, if that's the job that they have available and that I can actually get right now to continually keep a paycheck going, I'm washing dishes, bro. That's the bottom line. Like a lot of these people think, oh, you know, like I said, it might be a pride thing, whatever. <laughs> I think maybe because I've been doing acting for so long, I have zero pride. Like <laughs> I, I was gonna say, it sounds like you have no pride. So, like I have, I have no problem taking whatever job that I can get. It's like right now, I'm in a good position. I make decent living. I'm able to do this with my boy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, and I have a nice apartment. I'm moving into a house soon. You know, and so things are good for me right now. If things were not good for me right now, yes, I mean, I could possibly still do this with Mark. But at the same time, I know, like, I might end up, you know, I might have to pick up, like, you know, uh, do, do, hell, I mean, do an Uber now. I mean, that's your own car. I mean, you could do that with minimal setup whatsoever. So, I mean, like, there are options to take care of yourself. There are options to where you are not standing on a corner. Now, don't get me wrong, and do not take this as a go out and do this, but, <laughs> I mean, I watched the documentary on some of these panhandlers who are making like seven Shrilla. figures. A, they're making stupid money, mm -hmm. stupid money. You got to be the right spot. Off, yes, but they're making it off of you. That's they're right. making it off of you, me, whoever, who is willing to give them a dollar here, five dollars here, ten dollars here, because they, you know, somebody is is trying to see the humanity in somebody and being like, oh, you know what? Let me help them out. But, the, you know, if, like, that's, I think so there's... So are you uh, saying we should stop seeing humanity in people? No, I'm not, I'm, uh, yeah, no, I'm not saying that. But at the same time, I'm very cautious now. Um, I, I don't really give, I don't really, I don't really give money anymore. Uh, when I see that, I, I have, I carry extra waters with me. So I'll give them a water. Like the other day, I gave this lady uh, 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 a water and a Pop-Tart. I had a package of Pop-Tarts. And so I was like... And you know what? Look, I ain't got much. And I saw her standing there. So I was like, hey, look, I know it's hot out here. So here's a water. And I got you this Pop Tart, at least something to eat. So, you know, hope your day goes good, whatever. And I just, and, you know, right before I went into one of my stores. So, because I was going to do it afterwards. And I was like, nah, why wait? Let me just take care of this now. Let me at least do my, do a, do a good deed um, for this lady here. Um, so, so, but yeah, but like I said, like, so in that situation, I have actually stopped giving money. I will, I will get food. Um, I will give them like a, like a sandwich or something or extra piece of fruit or something that I have on me. But yeah, money is not one of the things I really give anymore. 
Yeah, no, and I don't tend to give money anymore either. I will, you know, give food or, uh, you know, a gift card to a store or something like that. Um, oh, I never thought about that. That's actually a good one. I like. Yeah, that. man, go go to like a I don't know, go to your favorite fast food joint and buy a bunch of like five dollar gift cards or whatever. And that's you know, a, I never thought about that. That's a really good idea, man. Well, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I, I never, I never, I mean, like, I used to get gift cards that I would give away, uh, like, uh, well, we were talking about it before, like, I would give away as prizes to the, to the, at the theater festival every once in a while, but, um, but yeah, no, I never thought, I ne oh, that's actually a really good idea, I might have to start doing that. Yeah, like, like, you work at a lot of Walmarts, right, you work in the Walmarts yeah. and stuff, and most Walmarts have a restaurant inside, right? Oh, uh, okay, well, I don't know, hey, oh, actually, here's a question, um, have you been in a Walmart recently? They had a McDonald's in it. Uh, not that specific. I the one closest to me has a Nathan's inside. Oh, oh, interesting. I know they have the Nathan's hot dogs there. So, um, but like apparently the contract is up with Walmart. Oh. Uh, the McDonald's contract is up with Walmart. So at least a couple of the WalMarts that I go into have been uh, the McDonald's are now gone, like um, completely. So. Which is very interesting to me. I was like, I was like, what the hell's going on in here? What is, what is the, and actually, you know what sucked is the day that I went in, the day that I found that out. Guess what? You guess what your boy wanted? A spicy McChicken. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew I was like, oh, I can grab one easily from the from the uh, from the Walmart. And I walked in. I was like, what the hell's a McDonald's? And so yeah. <laughs> At least you weren't craving a McRib. Hey. <laughs> Bring it back. Please make it permanent. actually. You know what though? You know what though? Uh, I don't know. Do you, I'm not a fan of the pickles on the mac rib. I mean, I know we're getting off this topic here, but I'm not fans of pickles on on the mac rib. I I don't like pickles. Uh, oh, that's right. So yeah. you know, for me that that's easy. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Anyways, but um, what were we talking about? We got so off topic. Um, George Floyd and and yeah. Let's get back to yeah. Let's get all. Let's get back to that. But um. So, so uh, if you are now just joining us, which I think most of you aren't, I think most of you have been on with us uh, most of the day uh, since we started. But um, we we found out earlier about uh, an hour ago, maybe a little under an hour ago, that um, Derek Chauvin, the officer who was charged uh, with killing George Floyd, was found guilty on all three counts. Um, so. Um, in this case, I do believe justice was served. Yeah, I I do as well. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we had a whole show rundown prepped for, for today. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, that all we, went out. <laughs> we were going to, we were going to be talking about a lot of, a lot of different things today that, um, you know, unfortunately when uh, cultural events happen, um, yeah. they, they take precedence, I think sometimes, you know, and obviously I think, you know, this, as we say in the top of our show, you know, uh, we talk about things that are interesting to us. And I think this is definitely uh, an, an interesting case, uh, an unfortunate situation. Um, but it is, you know, coming out on the other side, it looks like, uh, you know, based on everything, uh, the right decisions have been made. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I do agree with that. And, um, you know, so like I said, um, hopefully this will, um, this, we will see a change in the way that, uh, in, in some policing is done. Actually, you know what? I was, I was just thinking about this. Um, there was a, there was the, um, the mayor of, was it Boston Center? Uh, the the in 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 Minnesota is it where the uh, other the thirteen year old young man was shot recently? Is that what you're talking about? The the the, the um he was the driver. Uh, was it? Was, he wasn't thirteen, was he? I don't know. There, uh, this sounds terrible, but there have been so many things in the last couple of weeks that it's yeah, hard no, to I'm really. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, again, the, uh, that's also an issue. But um, in Boston Center, where this the the mayor of Boston Center was saying that unfortunately a lot of the police officers and and he understands this it's you know it's not always feasible for the people Brooklyn to, 
Brooklyn, Brooklyn Center. Center. That, yeah, that, sorry, my bad. I couldn't remember. I was like, oh, I said Brooklyn. I, anyways, Brooklyn Center. Thank you, Mark. Um, he was saying, I understand it's not feasible for everybody to live in the community um, that work as police officers in the community, which is understandable. But in order to, I think, really, in order to police a location, I think being from there gives you a different perspective. Um, one of the things, uh, it, it's a TV show, yes, but I, I kind of recently started watching SWAT um, the with uh, Shamar Moore. And um, some of the stuff takes place in, uh, like, South Central LA, East LA, things like that. And this is like a neighborhood where he's from. And so a lot of times when he goes into that neighborhood, you know, he's able to, he's able to talk to people um, from that neighborhood because they know him. And I think that, and, and there, and, and don't get me wrong, there are some officers that don't live in an area. Um, there's been some videos of a, of a police officer. I wish I could remember his name right now. Um, I mean, I've seen him posted on people's social media and everything else. This is a white officer who works in a predominantly black neighborhood, but he knows the kids. Uh, he knows the parents of these kids. He knows, he knows a good number of people in this community. And he has formed, uh, he has formed a very good working relationship with these people. These people trust him. They know that if anything goes down, he's got their back. Like, he, like if, if he sees one of the kids doing wrong, he's going to call them out on it. And he will be like, hey, you know what? I don't want to have to do anything to you. So, you know, and he'll take them home. He'll, t he'll talk to their parents and everything else and make sure that, you know, they, that, and like I said, but that's one of the things that I think a lot, we need to police community relations. I think that would make a huge difference if officers would go into neighborhoods. Now I understand it's not going to be always comfortable because of, of of recent things of past things and just like a lot of times that especially in black communities there are a, there's a lot of distrust um, uh with the police but i think if we could really get to a point when the officers know families and stuff like that get to know the people in those neighborhoods it's not that scary didn't it used to be that way to some extent i mean obviously i, I, I think it does still exist in some places, uh, but you know, I think from, I guess it depends on the neighborhood. I just, I'm trying to think back on my personal recollections and, you know, uh, even in my neighborhood growing up, you know, before I moved to Newark, um, you know, if, if I did something wrong, the mailman saw me, mailman go to my door and be like, Hey, and it happened, you know, mailman caught me and my friends doing something stupid and mailman took me to my home and like knocked on my door, told my folks what I did. Um, so it's, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying like, it's not just, yeah. that shouldn't just be the police's responsibility. Right. And, and I think it's a two way street, you know, one, we have to accept people in our community, right. right. Regardless, regardless of who they are, what they look who like, they anything are, yeah. like that, regardless of what their job is. Right. I mean, on any given day in my neighborhood, I've got, you know, somebody here getting uh, internet installed. I've got somebody here getting cable installed. I've got somebody here getting their, their yard work done, right? So these are people that are probably not from my neighborhood, but are in my community, right? right. And, and so I should show them the same level of respect as I would the people who actually live in my community. Right, absolutely. So I, I think, like I said, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying, I think it is a two-way street. I think, you know, maybe maybe the police do have a, have have done some negative things in different communities but we we should look at the individual rather than the badge right right, right a bad, absolutely a bad cop is a bad cop but that doesn't right. mean all cops are bad right and that's the thing and that's i definitely agree with you not all and again that, that's one of the that's one of the perceptions that keeps getting thrown around like uh, you know, and like all cop, like this one cop was bad. All cops are bad. No, that's not true. And this is one of those things that it, it, it's hard because it, even officers say like when, when something like this happens, it's hard for us to continue to do our job because then they automatically think it's us. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, and it's not, it's this, this person. And it could be a group of officers 
don't get me wrong. Like, it could be a group of officers, but, like, that's that group of officers. Like, it's not the uh, the station as a whole. Mm-hmm. There are still good people in there. I mean, like, there, there are good people. There are good people everywhere. And we there are have, bad people everywhere. And there are bad people everywhere. But we need to, you know, like, we cannot group all those people together and say they're all bad. Like that's like saying like that's all Australia. Black are bad or all white people are bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause that was a, <laughs> that started out as a penal as colony a prison colony. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I guess, I guess did the bad get wiped out? I don't know. <laughs> Has the bad been kind of scrubbed away? <laughs> Do you have any good Australian friends? I, uh, well, the only, oh no, she lives in New Zealand, huh? And I don't, and she's not really a great friend anymore either, because I haven't seen her in forever. Yeah. And she's American. Well, uh, that's true too. She's not from New Zealand. Yeah, that's very true. Just saying, I, I yeah, don't, that's... I don't, I don't know any. I don't have any personal Australian friends. I don't either. I don't think I've ever actually. I don't even think I've met anybody. Oh no, I've met people from England. I haven't met anybody from Australia. Yeah, there's a big difference there, but that's okay. No, uh, no, no. I was saying maybe I, we'll I do was, an, maybe we'll do an episode on geography in the near future. No, I was trying to figure out. I was like, were they? No, they were definitely weren't Australian. They were from England, and so yeah, so that's yeah. So I I know some English people. I don't know any Australians. Mm-hmm. And actually, the is he from Australia? I think he lives in Australia now, but he's originally from England, so that would make him English in general. So. All right, I think we uh, I think we uh, should wrap this thing up. Um, you know, I'm I'm glad we came on early. I'm glad that we got to uh, take in this uh, this moment together and and share that with our audience. And uh, you know, obviously, as always, I I appreciate everyone that has zo- tuned tuned in uh, throughout the episode and those that have been around the whole time. And uh, you know, this. Obviously, we'll be turned to a podcast, so if at any point you missed any of this conversation, um, we'll have it up here uh, in the next little while. Um, you know, we uh, we may do another recording at some point this week to 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 do the episode we planned because, uh, <laughs> like like I said, we 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 had a whole script, uh, not script, yeah. but, you know, an outline but, uh, of what we were going to we do. Talk about today, and and that kind of like he he called me up. Yeah, he called me up. And was like, hey. Hey, are you watching the news right now? I was like, what are you talking about, bro? And then he, like, as soon as I saw what was going on, I was like, he's like, you want to talk about this? And I was like, oh, we need to talk about this. And so um, we jumped on here and we were just kind of having a little chat prior, like we normally do before our show. And um, he was like, you want to go? And I was like, oh, I thought we were live now. And he was like, you want to go live? And I was like, we might as well. And so, um, yeah, thank you for being with us um, today. Um, I know I got a little fired up early. <laughs> um, and then you got disconnected. And then I got disconnected, and then we had to come back. So um, thank you for um, sticking with us today. Uh, Mark, thank you for calming me down a little bit there at the beginning. And Absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, uh, luckily but... the, the fire didn't need to ke- keep up throughout the episode. Luckily, you know, the, the jury uh, made some good calls and uh, – Hopefully we won't see any burning uh, buildings tonight. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, uh, let's, I, I would, I, uh, let's keep the celebration. Uh, let's, let's celebrate the justice was served. Uh, let's not let that turn into craziness. Um, let's make sure that does not happen. I, I'm, of course, we're not there in, in, uh, in Minnesota, but um, let's just hope that, you know, that um, in these cases, uh, in this case, um, uh, I think cooler heads is a good word to use, but like that, that, that will, that will cool heads will prevail in this situation where um, they can keep the jubilance. They can keep the kind of uh, spirit of, of, um, uh, of, of George Floyd alive. And that sense is that um, he has been, I think justice, was, we can all agree that justice was served here and that um uh, that will keep the city at some sort of peace. So, absolutely. So, thank you all for joining us. And uh, you know, we may be back at some point this week. May not. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Who knows? If going, not, man. we've already got next week's episode already planned. So, <laughs> don't have to think oh, about it. Oh man! 
Yeah, really. No, I thank you guys for joining us. I, 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 we really appreciate it. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Um, those have been, those have been great. So, um, definitely thank you guys. And, uh, Mark, I will see you later and, uh, we will see you all, if not later this week, next week for sure. Absolutely. Have a great right. uh, rest of your week, everybody. Bye-bye.